set, I'm going to talk about, I'll go through the basics of weight belts and wetsuits. Um, so uh, if you've got any questions about them um, and you're online now, you can ask them now, or obviously you can just put up a question when I put this up live and uh, we'll uh, and i'll answer them later for you so um just oh, things oh, oh, didn't mean to do that sorry just trying to close things down on the screen there so i can I get a clear clear view of what i'm doing okay so um let's start at uh, the top hope you had a good weekend um, uh, doing whatever you're doing. I did put a, a post up over the weekend of our free diving escapades. Uh, we did some open water free diving, um, or rather Kiri did, and I put a video of that up and uh, on Facebook. So if you want to check that out, lockdown open water free diving, it's different. Okay, so when we go free diving, um, I talked about pressure. Uh, last uh, Friday and how it affects things so as you go down the pressure increases so anything with an airspace uh, uh, compresses and I used a picture of a, a bottle that was squished at 20 meters uh, so and I mentioned five things that we take with us uh, that have um, air spaces in them so on Monday uh, on Friday sorry we talked about masks and I showed how they compress and different uh, ways that we get around uh, having to fill them with air or, or using less air to fill them as, as is most of the cases but also we have uh, the ears uh, which um, equalization techniques which we've covered um, in previous sessions um, so sinuses which we don't really have much control over uh, lungs which again just sort themselves out and uh, flexibility which we've talked about uh, with the ETT and bedtime stretches and finally I mentioned suits now suits are made up of um, neoprene um, and all of them have uh, little air bubbles in them so the reason wetsuits keep you warm is because there is um, uh, the, the neoprene holds air in them. The air is a really good insulator, so the, the heat doesn't transfer from or from your body out into the water uh, quickly. So it takes time for it to go through and heat up each of the little air bubbles. So this is a, a little picture of uh, Yamamoto rubber, uh, and you can see there are little closed cells, little bubbles of air that make up the rubber and on the outside of the rubber you've got various um, different surfaces so you have smooth skin uh, or which is this picture here or you have um, uh, a lining so the lining is for protection particularly uh, or primarily because the the, the rubber that with the little holes in it uh, bubbles sorry in it very very delicate so they put a lining on it either nylon or, or lycra and that stops it ripping the trouble is that water gets absorbed into that outer layer and when you come out of the water wind chill will take that um, or will evaporate that water out of that outer layer and make you colder so a smooth skin layer on that outside um, kind of helps keep you warmer yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about more of that in, in in a while i just wanted to show this picture to show how um, suits are made up now you'll notice on the outer level uh, there's that kind of water kind of blob on the on the outer layer on the inner layer there isn't anything now most free dive suits are what's called open cell on the inside so those little cells that are full of air uh, against your body so they're open cell you can have a lining on them on the inside but it defeats the object slightly it doesn't make it quite as warm um, but it does protect the rubber so that's open cell so those are little cells and they are open on the inside against your skin uh, keeps it again uh, uh, keeps it w warmer so uh, that's that's suits okay now um, as I say that these suits no matter which suit you have they have these little cells in with air in and they compress so as you go down the suit gets thinner and you get heavier 
Okay, so you really need to know what suit you're wearing and what walk you're in and how deep you're going to decide how um, how buoyant you're going to be. And if you're super buoyant, you need to wear a weight belt. So it's um, a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of knowledge as to where you're diving, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, to balance your weight. Now. If you uh, have ever done scuba diving, you'll know 10, 12 kilos is not unusual for people to be wearing. Whereas if you've gone on a on a, 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 a competent free diving session, you'll see you'll know that uh, three kilos is not uncommon. Okay, I'm not saying you know they're, they're, these are the uh, normals, but they're they're not uncommon. You can see 10 or 12 kilos is quite a lot of weight. Uh, whereas free divers wearing three kilos is is you know, not a lot of weight at all, and this is because scuba wetsuits don't have as much air in them. So those little cells that I've still got up on the screen there, you can see they're little fill, filled of air. Those cells filled of air, and they compress a lot. And scuba suits don't have that, so they don't compress much. Okay. So they have to compensate. They have to have a lot of air in their jackets and a lot of a lot of neoprene, which doesn't compress. So they have to have a, a, a lot of weight. Whereas free divers, we have low cells which do compress, which means we sink when we uh, hit like 10, 20 meters. Okay? So that's why we have different weights. Equally well, our suits compress a lot. So we need a rubber weight belt. All right? And the rubber weight belt will change size with us. If you imagine uh, a five mil wetsuit, and uh, when we're in cold water, we uh, roll over the, the, the waistband of the trousers, so that's five mil, plus the roll over five mil, plus the five mil at the top, that's 15 mil, all the way around our bodies. Now, when we dive, around, dive down to, um, uh, as we go down to, uh, a depth that compresses say 10 meters that 15 mil that goes all around your body will go down to seven uh seven and a half mil and if you go down to 30 meters it's going to be just over three mil so there's a big change in your waist size okay? so you need a rubber weight belt that will compensate for that again scuba suits don't compress as much therefore they don't need to worry about this so a scuba weight belt will be made of of nylon and won't stretch at all Okay, but we have rubber weight belts. So the first rubber weight belts that I'm going to put up is uh, this. It's called a Marseille type, a Marseille type. Now you can see the actual rubber of the belt is quite thick. And these are primarily used by spear fishermen who use more weight than a pure freediver. And this is because spear fishermen don't tend to go as deep and they want to be heavy. They want to be really negatively buoyant. They want to stick to the floor. So maybe they're diving at, I don't know, let's say 10, 15, 20 meters is a, an average kind of spear fishing depth, okay? Which is, which is deep enough, okay? But there's the bottom. They're not gonna go any further than that because they're gonna sit on the bottom. There's always exceptions, you know, a blue water a spear fisherman, but you know, they're not the usual. They're, they're the exception to the rule. So you'll find a spear fisherman going to 10, 15 meters is going to wear maybe six, seven, eight kilos because they want to stick to the bottom at 10 to 15 meters. So they have to have a thicker rubber that doesn't stretch as much. Whereas a pure free diving weight belt, something like this Oma, okay, the rubber's a lot thinner because you're looking at wearing three, maybe four kilos on it. Okay, so that's the difference. And the Marseilles, again, that buckle, that, that big kind of solid buckle, is because you tend to have more weight on it, okay, than a free diving uh, weight belt like this. Okay, so there's um, loads of people ask me when they're buying a weight belt, what's the difference? There's no, uh, you know, there, there are, there's a difference, and that's why they're different, but it's not, not uh, the, you know, a, a massive uh problem if you get a Marseille when you go free diving or if you wore a standard uh, rubber weight belt when going free diving yeah but both of them are rubber and that's that's the important thing um I will mention these uh, as we go through uh, these are pool suits okay so um do people do wear them in open water they are a version or based on a 
triathlon wetsuit. They're not particularly warm. They're not particularly buoyant. Um, and this one we've got here is not particularly smooth skinned. So you don't get particularly a benefit of the smooth skin as you cut through the water. It's smoother than skin and it's compression. So if you see any, any uh, films of people, especially on a sled when they're moving quick, you see their, their skin ripples. Okay, this is, is really bad cavitation and, and slows you down. So a nice suit that compresses you will keep you slick and, and, and cut you through the water. So these are pool suits. Now they're called pool suits even if you're in open water. Uh, they don't have a hood. They don't have a, and they have a zip down the back. Um, they have various ways of making sure not much water gets in through the zip, but inevitably water does. And also down the neck, they have a seal here, but inevitably water will go in there. Which means if you're going in water that's um, not, not super warm, okay, and you're going head first, um, you know, no fins, you're going to flood that suit. Which is fine if it's super warm water. If it's not super fine, uh, no, not super warm, it's going to be a little bit cold. Okay. Uh, they're super trick and trendy at the moment because they look good. Uh, they look good if you're wearing them around the pool. They look good as you kind of uh, walking down a pontoon to get to a dive site. But as to whether they're good for free diving, they are good for specific place, things. But yeah, as, as I say, not for warmth. They don't keep you very warm. And people have worn them uh, in when we've gone to dive for life and they've got cold, which is, you know, that's the kind of level. It has to be warmer than Dive for Life, and Dive for Life's quite a warm pool. Yeah. Well, a warm open water site, uh, because it's a pool. <laughs> okay, so we mostly go, most, and the, uh, they also have a lining on the inside, again, detracting from the, the warmth. Woo! So, onwards. We generally have uh, two-piece suits, so this is uh, an, a great photo we've got of various different um, uh, no tanks uh, team members with Elios suits so you'll see um, they're mostly open cell suits okay uh, you've got uh, two face in the middle there um, and he's he's wearing just a, a standard suit in different colors the others are all uh, smooth skin suits um, these are all from Elios. We we buy from Elios just because you know um, they are good. They are very good, possibly the best. Um, but that's who who we go with. They're tailor made, all handmade to you to your specific size. Uh, they're all two piece suits, so there's no zip. And as I say in cold water, this was taken in Iceland, which is cold water. Uh, you fold down the high waist pants and creates a seal between the outside of, of the, uh, sorry, the inside of the trousers and the inside of the top. It means it's at uh, the waist, you get a, a nice waterproof seal. Now, the other interesting thing with this photo, and the reason I used it, is if you look at um, Arno Silver Surfer and Kiri, you can see, in fact, all of them. You can you can see uh, Alex, um, you know, in the middle there. You can see how low they're wearing their weight belts, and this is to create that seal between the legs and and the top. Now, smooth skin suits they make them in different colours, and if you ask nicely, they'll make them specially for you, which is which is quite nice. Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, so. Uh, Elios wetsuits, two-piece wetsuits, most of them open cell, uh, all, yeah, pretty much all of them are open cell and most of them are smooth skin on the outside which just um, helps uh, with warmth, helps with you gliding through the water and it also makes makes you feel very very uh, comfortable. Okay. So um, another thing that um, I said oh, 20 years ago now when I first went um, put a, it's actually a spear fishing wetsuit which is halfway between a free diving suit and a scuba suit it is um sorry the cat's attacking something wait cat stop attacking things wait stop it um 
uh, yeah, spear fishing suit, halfway between a scuba suit and a freediving suit, uh, which means it's kind of slightly heavier than a freediving suit, uh, not quite as warm, but a lot more um, durable. And the first time I wore one, 20 years ago, I was in Raysbury and I wore a spear fishing suit, a Cressy spear fishing suit. And, um, and I said, right, this, this is a game changer. This is something that I've never experienced before. And I vowed then that every single person who dives with no tanks will have the opportunity to wear a free diving suit because it makes that much of a difference. That's Kiri come to take the offending cat away. Oh my. Offending cat has been removed. <laughs> and destroyed the office as well. Okay, so so when you come on an open water course with no tanks, there will be an opportunity to wear a, a freediving wetsuit, a two-piece wetsuit. And that's that's what I uh, that's what I said, and that's that's we've managed to do that for twenty years. Um, the weight belts we use are rubber weight belts. Ours are pretty much all of the hired ones are the Oma. Okay, we got some Marseille ones, and most of them will have um, legal weight. So this is a, a half kilo weight. Okay, half kilo, uh, and it's covered in plastic. It is lead and it's covered in plastic. Now, EU regulations for the last two years means you can't have a lead weight without a plastic cover on it because they are um, poisonous, lead is poisonous. It really refers to, uh, to fishing with a line, so they put lead weights on their, on their line and the word lead weight, and the law says lead weights have to be covered, so these are lead weights and they have to be covered but you're not likely to get a swan swallowing one of these and dying from lead poisoning but that's where it stands um, this is a standard scuba weight two kilos you can see that, it's quite heavy you can see the size difference this way and quite a lot of size difference that way okay so this is a two kilo weight it works fine if you're if you're at, you know starting free diving and somebody gives you some lead weights it's fine it's illegal to sell these in shops because they're not covered in uh, plastic. And there is a, a law, and I'm not sure how far it's gone through, uh, where lead is not allowed at all and you have to get stainless steel weights. The stainless steel is not as dense as, um, as the lead weight, as lead is, so you need more of it to create the same uh, you know, sinky, sinkiness. That's an official... Uh, technical term sinkiness okay so it's not as dense so you need more of it so stainless steel weights are quite a lot bigger okay so uh, you can get them and you see them around okay so that's my uh, suit and I've got another picture and I can't remember what it is so I'm gonna have a look ah yes I'm gonna put that up so uh, that's my uh, weight and suit chat um, and um, I was also going to mention neck weights. So neck weights are quite interesting. Um, they are standard fare for most free divers, okay. And we wear them for several reasons, okay. So the first reason you'd wear neck weight. So a weight literally clipped around your neck, either lead shot in 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 uh, in tubing which is what we make, or the uh, lobster, which is quite expensive, but it's a nice fitting weight that actually fits on the shoulders. It doesn't go around the neck, it goes on the shoulders. So it's not, uh, you can't use it in all cases. Uh, and then there's a, a new one out, which is kind of a clipping thing. Uh, but you wear a neck weight. Usually in, in, the, in the pool, you'll be swimming along like this. And your lungs are buoyant at the front of your body and will be lifting you up like this. So you want to put some weight. Some people say you should put weight above the lungs, okay, to try and neutralize, uh, get a neutral buoyancy so you can swim straight. But the neck weight, you're trying to put it slightly forwards to create a seesaw effect. Now, if you're a guy with heavy legs, your leg, it's not that your chest is coming up, it's that your legs are sinking. So putting a neck weight on will just make you sink. Okay. So you've got to, again, play with this buoyancy idea. If you're in a suit in a pool, then you're probably all buoyant. 
you might need some weight on your on your waist so a couple of kilos or a kilo on your on the waist but again your lungs are the buoyant part of your body so you put a neck weight on to kind of level yourself out okay it's important to learn to swim without a neck weight uh, you, it's super important that you build up not only confidence um, in diving without a neck weight but equally well uh, you, the skills the strength of your swimming of your underwater do not need a neck weight okay it's really important not to rely on pieces of equipment so one day you might not have it and you don't want to go right i'll go home i've got a neck weight or it falls off or i don't know there's a hundred things that could happen okay you don't want to end up relying on a piece of equipment so it's super super important to learn to swim and dive without a neck weight and then you get a neck weight and it is easier it is so much easier because not only uh, if you're buoyant you have to swim down all the time to stay to stay underwater as soon as you put a neck weight on you can swim straight okay i said that you put a neck weight on to stop you doing this okay but actually it's to stop you to doing this because as you're floating up um, you have to swim down against that buoyancy. So you put a neck weight on to keep you straight. Okay? And this is why you find when people put a neck weight on, they swim into the bottom of the pool. And they say, ah, oh, neck weight's too heavy, neck weight's too heavy. It's not. It's the fact that they were buoyant, so they were swimming down against it, and they've done that for their entire life. Then they put a neck weight on, and they keep swimming in the same direction, which is down. Okay? So you put a neck weight on, and then you have to correct your, your swimming uh, angles, your straight anyway so that's in a pool in open water you use a neck weight because as you're swimming down okay and uh and you you put your weight instead of putting it on your waist which could pull you over you put it on your neck to pull yourself straight down okay so uh you put a neck weight on to make free fall or swimming down a lot easier <coughs> excuse me okay so that's why you use a neck weight in open water. Again, it's important to learn to dive without a neck weight, okay, in case it falls off, in case you haven't got it, in case your suit's the wrong suit for that scenario and you're too buoyant and you build up the strength in your technique to compensate, but equally well your confidence, okay. I have actually genuinely had people who, are, who were reasonably high up who have come to sessions and said, I can't dive without a neck weight and you go whoa like you can't dive as well but you know you you should be able to dive without a neck weight you know you don't see kids needing neck weights when they jump in a pool and swim swim around underwater all right so it's important to learn without a neck weight and then use it to improve yourself because you, again as i said on friday you can't get the improvement from having a neck weight twice you only can get it once but the second thing and this is for more senior people when you hit free fall i mean you should really be wearing ankle weights because you want to you want to make sure make it so hard that your ankles will be falling all over the place so you learn to correct with ankle weights on i mean you take your ankle weights off it's going to be super easy right? we don't go that far usually we wear a waist uh, ang uh, weight on the on the waist which does make you fall over when you're not going fast enough when you're not streamlined enough when you're not straight enough when you're not relaxed enough when the hips and the knees are not relaxed okay when the hips and the knees are not relaxed and they're straight you will go off so you need to learn that relaxation that solidity in the position which then you speed up and the water will then hold you in that position and you learn that with weight at the waist when you've got it you put the neck weight on and it is so easy you can hit the glide that much earlier because uh it's going to pull you into the correct position a lot earlier a lot better okay so learn free fall with no wet neck weight then on when you want to put it on it makes so much easier it's the same with a sled. You'll see us with a sled and you can see somebody who hasn't got particularly good form on a sled when you've got 15 kilos pulling you down with their tents. The sled will spin round and round and round and round and round. If you've learnt free fall and you're good in position, you're good and relaxed in that, that free fall position, put you on a sled, poof, goes so quick. Okay, so that's my, uh, my appraisal of weight and... Um, 
weight and weight uh, weight weight belt and wetsuits. Okay, there's a picture of Kiri by the way with her um, very very special um, uh, um, wetsuit by Elios. Thank you very much for Elios for making that for us. It's a few years ago now, and I had the fins made up to match or to not match, as the case may be. And uh, Lum Brothers made the uh, lead. Uh, we they don't make red lead weights, but they made up some special uh, lead weights for for Kiri as well. So thanks to them as well for her um, uh, alter ego at the time, which was um, uh, Harlequin. Okay, so I say that's my uh, appraisal of suits and weights. Um, there are some other p things out there that people use. Uh, wrist weights, for instance, especially for uh, depth dive against Tanya Street, they used uh, um, wrist weights. Used to be illegal in competition, but weren't legal, but were legal in uh, record attempts, which is why you can see Tanya uses uh, wrist weights when she did her uh, 70 meter constant weight dive. But you wouldn't see many other people wearing them because they were illegal in competition. Now you can do what you like. Again, what she was doing was moving the, the weight further forwards. Nowadays you don't see it. Uh, most most people break form. So say 30, 30 meters or so, you break form. So having ankle, uh, wrist weights detracts. It makes the, the, it harder because you're putting weight at the at the, the waist again. So that's why you don't see uh, wrist weights too much these days. Um, you also see people putting strips of lead in their hats, especially in the pool. Again. As I said about neck weights, trying to move the weight forwards. If you move it even further forwards and put it in the head, you need less of it. So you can have a kilo inside your swim hat as opposed to two kilos on the, on the neck. Okay. Um, don't see it that often, but you do see it. Uh, I think uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, uh, you can get fin weights. Yeah, I was just trying to think there's there is another type of weight. They're thin weights and they tend to be used by spear fishermen. In fact, exclusively used by spear fishermen where uh, they're sitting on the on the bottom and their, their feet are going to float up or even in a relaxed position, their fins are going to be on display. OK, so they're, they're looking for the fish and they've got their fins coming up behind them. That's that's no good. So just a half kilo weight on each fin just uh, lays the fins down and they can still be relaxed they don't have to force the feet down so again it's a balancing thing it's not about sinking uh, particularly it's about just just getting your fins out of the way um, so they don't float around and scare fish off so that's why you'll see some fin weights around apart from that don't forget when you buy a weight belt buy a knife all no tank seniors will have a knife but you don't have to be a senior to get a knife. There's some really cheap knives out there. And uh, if you have one for 10 years and you don't use it, I'll give you the money myself. We are free divers. Free divers. We are uh, in danger of entanglement with fishing line. And especially if we're playing around with ropes, have a knife. Please, when you buy a weight belt, buy a knife. Stick it on there and you will just ignore it. Just ignore it. And uh, if you need it, it's there. If you don't, then that's all very good. Um, and that's it. Any other questions, hit me up on Facebook um, or in the messages here. And I'll see you tomorrow night. We're going to talk about fins tomorrow night. I'm going to go through the whole fins thing. Um, thank you very much. Good night. See you tomorrow.